Here is a 2024 Genesis G80 3.5T all-wheel drive sport in black with red leather interior. The 3.5T now gets standard all-wheel drive. The mid-cycle refresh, well, 2025 is when we're getting it. So is it better to option this or wait for the refresh? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides in which I'm gonna be going over pros and cons. The problem that I have with the G80 and the comparable rival starting up front led headlights daytime runnings it's a quad lighting setup this is going to be reworked for 25. also the grill when you go to the sport trim it's going to be unique all the other trims will have a different grill texture the lower is going to have the grill pattern with the gloss black elements and the genesis badging that flows over the long hood now there is two options to the g80 you can get a single turbocharged four cylinder with 300 horsepower and when you're thinking about the germans bmw audi mercedes that itself makes it the best in class. But what we have here is the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. That produces 375 horsepower and 391 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. Going back to the rival perspective, the BMW 5 Series just got a refresh and they have increased power for the 530 in which it's still going to be less than this at a base trim and it's going to be more money. You can actually option this engine, this spec, right at the same MSRP as a base 530. When you're looking at Mercedes, same thing. It's gonna have the same power output. It'll be quicker than all of them, so you're getting the luxury style back with performance so you don't have to go up to the G90 and get that limousine ride or feel because it's a longer vehicle giving a little bit more space than this for the rear occupants, but this slots in between that and the G70. So it's kind of the sweet spot and it's achieving 17 MPGs for the city with 25 MPGs for the highway, 19 inch wheels. It's a multi-spoke setup. For 25, they will have a new wheel design. And not only are we getting a four wheel independent suspension, but we're also receiving an electronically controlled suspension with road preview. The technology of that is in $100,000 vehicles and you're getting this in the $60,000 price point. Quad LED tail lights and the lower gets a dual exhaust outlet. And I like that they have the bumper guard. It has the little Genesis badging and it flows into the Genesis script with the trunk lid spoiler so it keeps a sporty exit. Now for the 25 model, the rear bumper will be reconfigured, the lights, and for the sport trim, it's going to look a little bit more sporty. Now going to the question, is this better to option than a 25 model? I like what you're getting as a package. Anytime you do a refresh, just like BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, the price increases a significant bump in which you lose that sweet spot. So I'm more curious to see what the pricing is. As for styling elements, it will look a little bit more athletic, but when you're thinking about the G80, you're starting to want more of a luxury look instead of a sport look blend in which now they're transforming all of their vehicles to look like the Germans, which to me is a big problem because it shows an identity crisis, which Genesis doesn't have at the moment because they set themselves apart with the quad lighting setup and putting it on the side profile. And when you go into the 80 and 90, you get that presidential drive for a fraction of the price. Power lift gate going inside to the cargo in which you'll have some storage cubbies on the side here when you pull up the nets. Underneath the floor gets a spare tire with the battery and you get a pass through. And because people get locked in their trunk a lot, you have the kill switch right here. So that way you can get outside if you need to. This is a twin turbo V6. Let's go inside, start it up. So you can hear that exhaust note. Leather wrap seats with the red interior, 12-way power seat adjustment. We get the quilted and the piping in the black memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. Both the driver and the passenger have the same amount of space, which is not necessarily common in vehicles nowadays. Usually the center cluster will bulge out or the actual floor will 
kind of come upwards. The dashboard gets the aluminum inlays and it's going to be more sporty, housing the 14.5 touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse and we get a reverse camera. It doesn't cover the full screen. This is the big problem that I have right off the bat. And even if you option a 360, it's still going to have this little area here. I would like it to stay for the full screen. You can open or close it and you can use it for the passenger side. It has a rotary knob that will control it. One thing that I'm also having an issue with is because of the length of this, I tend to put my hand on the rotary knob to put it into drive and I think this is putting it into drive, which it's not. Dual climate control and it's a touch sensitive with the heated and ventilated seat switches. Open up inside here with USB ports and a storage container. The cup holders is going to hold the key fob for the G80. It's gonna be a little bit more sporty. Opens up inside here with a 12 volt. It's a deep storage pocket with a little storage nook that can be removed. And the leather wrapped steering wheel, it's perforated on the sides, contrast stitching with red. I like how it illuminates with the touch sensitive buttons paddle shifts, and the gauge cluster has a digital reader that can go through an array of information for the driver, including the driving mode select, which is comfort, sport, eco, and custom. Kind of wish it was a whole digital, but I do like the design layout. When you turn on the signals, we do not have the option where you'll see the cameras there. Auto dimming rear view mirror with a large panel moonroof that goes to the back seats. The door panels and the dash configure in together and it keeps a sport heritage. One touch up and down for all the windows. I like the two-tone. I just wish it was a little bit more soft where it needs to be. The aluminum inlays come into play with a long storage pocket. For the back seats headroom, you have plenty of it. Leg space, the same thing with storage behind both of the front seats. Air vents with a storage tray. Cup holders in the center, heated rear seats. And when you open this up, you get two USB ports, some storage, and a little area here that you can store a smartphone. The door panel is going to have the same materials found in the front. It's just going to be a lot more soft for the back with a smaller storage pocket. Sliding into the center of the floor picks up quite a bit. You'll be sharing some feet space, but in shoulder space, and also sitting in the center, you sit up higher, and that's going to resort and less headroom unless I sit up like this. The G80, should you wait for a 25 model or option this? The only reason why I would tick the box for a 25 is because of the technology. You're getting the new larger screen, the dashboard layout, and I like luxury and sport blended. So if I was optioning the sport trim, then yes, I would go for the 25. If I'm not optioning that, but I'm trying to stay with that twin turbo engine and I just want it more luxurious, then I would option a 24 because of the value that you're capturing. On the exterior, it's going to look a lot more aggressive and you're getting a more sporty grill design that's unique to the sport trim. But when you're thinking about this vehicle, this is a 3.5 twin turbo V6. Check this thing out. And what people don't understand is how quick the car really is for a 60-ish grand vehicle because comparing it against BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, you're saving 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars to get something similar with horsepower, torque, and zero to 60 numbers. Now, it's not going to be airtight like a 50 50 weight distribution because this is also a longer wheelbase than the G70. However, when I'm thinking 5 Series or E Class, this is saving me ten, twenty thousand dollars that I can go on a vacation. And if I want to go electrified, I can do so. I'm not going to get the best range, but it's pretty decent in the charging times and it's still quick on the zero to sixties and anything comparable to that is going to still be probably 10 to $20,000. Because if you go into the five series and you tick the box for the M60, which would be the top variant for them, that's going to be 90 some thousand dollars. The electrified G80 is around 77 fully loaded. And that's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, you already know the value that you're getting, the luxury that's captured. 
It's a smooth drive, quiet in the interior. The cons is when you start hovering near 70 grand, I would like to see more power seat adjustments. I would like to see massage seats, standard memory seats for the passenger, and don't do like they do in all, and don't disqualify the passenger by neglecting to give the same power seat adjustment as you do the driver going up the trims. I'm not a big fan of adding the features to these vehicles because it increases it significantly, but look at the performance yet again. I mean, it's gonna throw you back. You're gonna get that throaty exhaust note. It's not as good as the 5.0 V8 they discontinued. That engine was awesome, but this engine is more refined in the sense of quicker and better MPGs. The big problem that I have starts off with we're getting a mid-cycle refresh, and I feel like brands should just skip a year. Therefore, not making it such a nickel and dime type of thing. Because what's gonna happen is people are gonna want this vehicle or they're gonna say, you know what, I'll wait. But the ones that come in for this car at the dealership are gonna say, what kind of discount can you give me? And it shouldn't be like that. And the other big problem that I have, the gauge cluster is not a full digital reader. It's a half digital reader, which I would rather have it either analog or full, one of the two. Don't do a blend. And then when you're doing the reverse camera, why are we not getting a 360 degree reverse camera standard? This is a Genesis, it's not a Kia, it's not a Hyundai. Why are we not getting a standard wireless charging pad? Why are we not getting wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto? I understand that the 25 model will get a refresh and more than likely this is going to be taken care of, but I want this variant. Maybe I don't wanna wait. And then the back seats, to use the heated seats, this is another area that needed to be configured and hopefully they take care of it. You have to fold down the armrest to make it kind of like a two seat in the back instead of the three seat that it is to utilize it. Or you have to tell the person that's sitting in the center, can you move so I can just hit the switch? Just simply put it on the side for the door pocket or in the center like every other automotive industry. And another pro is the touch sensitive for the dual climate control settings, heated and ventilated seats, which will change the color of the seat to blue or red and the heated steering wheel because everything is where it needs to be. The steering is light, so for the everyday drive, it's comfortable. Even with these wheels, going at a higher or slower speed, it goes over imperfections smoothly. The suspension is soft, the seat cushions are good. I would like to see at least manual cushion extensions because I'm in the G80, but when I'm thinking about the rivals, hands down, this is a deal. But let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram, leave a comment and a like, and I'd like to thank Genesis of Newport Ritchie for giving us this 2024 Genesis G80 for our car review.